Mathematics, the unit one, 2021 paper. We're gonna have lots of fun, lots of fresh markers. All right, so if you just recently did the June 2001 paper, you can use this video to just see how you went. You can start to gauge all the paper to win for you, and I hope it went very well. So, we're gonna have lots of fun going through this paper here. All right, question one is a true table question. So these are all that we have. I will need to complete the table. Of course, they give us true, true, false, false. True, false, true, false. So to complete the table, not P, remember, negate P, so we'll get false, negate true, we'll get false, negate false, we'll get true, negate false, we'll get true. We negate Q, negate true, we'll get false, negate false, we'll get true, negate true, we'll get false, negate false we get true p or q true or true is true true or false is true false or true is true false or false is false negation of p or q or negate true you get false negate true you get false negate true you get false negate false you get true not p or not q not p or not q is these two False or false is false. False or true is true. True or false is true. True or true is true. So that's the truth table right there. This is four marks. That's four marks right there. The next part says, hence justify if the two statements are logically equivalent. So the second part, we need to justify if these two statements are logically equivalent. No. No. We can say no. The negation of P or Q is not logically equivalent. So, not P or not Q. These two statements are not logically equivalent. And the reason why they're not logically equivalent because they don't have the same true result. This I get false and false. The first one good. This I get true and this I get false. This I get true and this I get false. This I get true and this I get true. So clearly, they're not logically equivalent. So since they're not logically equivalent, since these two are not logically equivalent, then the two statements cannot be logically equivalent since they don't yield the same true result. Oh, everybody get this. This is too much. Tree says write the converse of the statement and the statement they give is n is an integer n is an integer implies n squared is an integer so they gave us this statement and they said to write the converse so what we can do is call this P, call this statement P. So N is an integer, call that P. And call this statement Q, N squared is an integer. And so this statement up here is P implies Q. What's the converse of P implies Q? The converse of P implies Q is Q implies P. So the converse is Q implies P. And since the converse is Q implies P, we can tell them so the converse is just going to be N square is an integer.
n squared is an integer implies, um, let's put arrow down here, n squared is an integer implies n is an integer. I wanted it to be in the same line, but this is the first part. n squared is an integer implies n is an integer. That's your answer. That's your answer. The next part of the question says, for two real numbers x and y, the operation star is given by x star y equal x squared plus y squared. Prove that star is closed in R. So we have x star y is equal to x squared plus y squared. And they tell us that x and y are in real numbers. And they tell us prove that star is closed. So prove star is closed in R. So this is how we're going to do it. It's very nice. So look at this. X is an element of R. If X is a real number, then X square must be a real number as well. Yeah, makes sense. And if Y is a real number, then that means that Y square must also be a real number. So that means uh, x squared plus y squared, if x squared is a real number and y squared is a real number, x squared plus y squared, that must also be a real number. But x squared plus y squared, that's just a binary operation star, that is just x star y. And so x star y is going to only yield a real number. So we can write, therefore, star is closed in R. Close just mean that the output is always going to be a real number. No matter which two number you use, the output is always going to be real. And that's the answer. If x is a real number, x squared is real. If y is a real number, y is real. And so x squared plus y squared, that's going to be real. And so x squared plus y squared is x star y. So x star y is closed in R. This was nice. By the way, this is three marks. That's it. Nice. That's the three marks right here. All right. The next part says determine whether the binary operation star is commutative. So remember, for commutativity, for commutativity, we need to show that A star B is equal to b star a. That's what we need to prove. If, if star is commutative, then a star b is equal to b star a. Now guys, you don't have to prove it algebraically. You can always prove it with numbers. So example, you can look at 5 star 2. 5 star 2 would be 5 square plus 2 square. That's 25 and 4, that's 29. Now you can look at 2 star 5. And 2 star 5 is going to be 2 square plus 5 square. And that's also going to be 29. Now, this is going to justify. Look at that. So, this say 5 star 2 is equal to 2 star 5. So, we can conclude. Therefore, star is commutative. The star is commutative just like that. So you don't need to actually use the algebraic way and start by saying a squared plus b squared can rearrange the order as b squared plus a squared and then say yeah it's commutative. You can just pick guys, you can pick some numbers and make it very easy. Just pick some numbers and take it and check it. Just check it. Just check it. So let's check it like that. Two marks. Part C. Part C says we have the function f of x equal to ax cubed plus 3x squared minus b. 
And the question says it has a remainder when divided by x plus 2 and it is divisible by 2x minus 1. So they tell us f of x is divisible by 2x minus 1 and it tells us f of x leaves a remainder of negative 5 when divided by x plus 2. And the question says find the values of a and b. So this is all the information that we need to find a and b. f of x is divisible by x minus a half. What you need to do is set 2x minus 1 equal to 0. What you're going to end up getting is x equal to a half. When you get x equal to half, that implies that f of a half is equal to a zero. So when you put half into the function, you set it equal to zero. So let's do that. f of a half is going to be a times a half cube plus three times a half square minus b equals zero. Now, a half cube is, that looks like one over eight and multiplied by a, so that's a over eight, plus a half square is a quarter, and this is a three, so this is three over four, minus b equal to zero. Now I can multiply this equation through by eight. If I multiply through by eight, this is gonna become a plus, eight times three is, eight times three over four, I know 8 times a quarter, 8 times 3 over 4, 4 is itself 1, this is 2, 2 times 3 is 6, so that's plus 6, minus 8b equal to 0. So, if we want to write this equation down, we can write it somewhere here proper. Just to write this equation proper, it is a minus 8b equal negative 6 a minus 8b equal negative 6. Just to write it down proper. That's our equation 1. Now the next equation, it says when f of x is divided by x plus 2, it reads a remainder of negative 5. So we're going to plug in. If you set this equal 0, x plus 2 equals 0. You get x equal negative 2. So when you get x equal negative 2, that means f of negative 2 is minus 5. So f of negative 2 is going to be equal to, plug negative 2 in here, a times negative 2 cube, plus 3 times negative 2 square minus b. That's equal to negative 5. If we can simplify, negative 2 cube is negative 8. So that is giving us negative 8a, negative 2 square is 4, negative 2 square is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, minus b is equal to negative 5. So if we want to bring this over, bring over the 12 over there to get negative 8a, bring over the 12, negative 8a minus b, Bring over the 12, it becomes minus 12, so that's negative 17. This is our next equation. Now, I like to do elimination method. I don't like to do substitution. So if I multiply the first equation by 8, I would get 8a times this by 8 minus 64b equal to 8 times 6 is 48, so that's minus 48. If I go ahead and add these two equations, just gonna put an arrow here to say add. If I add them negative 8a plus 8a that gone, that becomes zero. Negative b plus negative 64b, that gives me negative 65b equal. So see the arrow here, let me point the arrow a little better. This is where the arrow is going, right there. And then negative 17 plus negative 48 
is negative 65. So from this equation, we end up get, if we divide both sides by 65, therefore B equal one, right? So B equal one. When you get B equal one, if B is one, if you plug one in here, this is saying A, we we'll plug one in here, A minus B is one, so minus eight is negative six. So A minus eight is negative six. And so A, bring over the eight over there to get negative six plus eight. And so negative six plus eight is two. So A equal two. So the final answers are B equal one and A equal two. That's a seven mark. We give it all the seven marks to the base. We really don't do nothing. It's simultaneous equation. It didn't even require a calculator. Imagine. We're getting seven marks without using a calculator. That's that's nice. Alright? So that's that question right there. Part B says we're supposed to solve the equation log to base 2 of x plus log to base 4 of x plus log to base 16 of x equal to 7. So if we're solving this equation, first thing we need to do is change the bases. Oh. First thing we need to do is change the bases. We cannot solve a log equation if they're not all in the same base. So if we change the bases, this is going to be log to base 2 of x plus change base 4 to base 2. This is going to be log to base 2 of x over log to base 2 of 4. Plus, this is log to base 2 of x over log to base 2 of 16. All we're doing is using change of base rule equals 7. Just to write down change of base rule, the log of a base of a number is equal to the log of a new base, A, of the number N, divided by the log of the new base of the old base. That's the change of base log. That's what we're doing. Nice. Now, all we need to remember is, look at this. Log base 2 of 4 is 2. So this is log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of x over 2 plus log base 2 of x over log base 2 of 16 is, that's 4. Plus 2 to the 4 give us 16 equals 7. So we can multiply through by 4. This become 4 log base 2 of x plus 4 times a half that give us 2 log base 2 of x plus this is log base 2 of x equal 4 times 7 is 28. Now call log base 2 of x a. 4 apple plus 2 apple plus 1 more apple. 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 7. So that's 7 log base 2 of x equal 28. We can divide both sides by 7 to get log base 2 of x is 4. And if log base 2 of x is 4, by the definition of logarithm, this is telling us that x is equal to 2 to the 4, and 2 to the 4 is 16. That's the final answer right there. 16. How much marks to the this? We literally don't do nothing. 6 marks to the this. We're getting six marks to do nothing. All right? So that's the answer, 16. Six marks for this question. Answer 16. Nice. So that takes care of question one. Stay tuned for question two and the others.